Well, good afternoon, it's Mr. Egg here. Welcome to another video. Uh, this one's a little bit different because we're having a three-way conversation. Yes, our very first threesome on the channel. And I'm talking golf with two of my good friends, Mr. Callum Mackey and Mr. Mike Bridge. Hello. Hello, Phil. Nice to have you here. Very nice to see you guys. Can I uh, take my mask off now? Yeah, go on then. We are socially distanced. Um, now, let me just explain for those people that don't know you. First of all, Mike, you're the... Editor-in-Chief editor -in -chief of uh, Golfing Thailand. Yes, on ThaiVisa.com. And before that, I used to be the editor of Thai Golf News and the Patia Golfer. So for the last 10 years, golf journalism has been my forte. And I also sell Phoenix shirts. Oh, excellent. So you're out and about in the golfing world every day. That, that's your job. At the moment, touch wood. Good, good, good. And Callum, a familiar face to many of my friends and also regulars in the bar at the pub. You were the owner of Solar Golf for many years. I was. I was the owner of uh, Solar Golf Limited in the UK to begin with. And we did outbound package golf tours to Thailand. And then I started my own company in Thailand, also called Solar Golf. And uh, I was the owner of that. And a team of people, we handled, at the peak, we were probably doing about 3,000 rounds of golf a year. So it was a, it was a fairly meaty business, uh, but I decided that I was due for retirement at 65. So I sold the company and uh, I've been a, a man of some leisure since. Fantastic. And this is, this is where you live, so it's, it's, it's amazing. You know, very nice, relaxed. Yes, that, that's a nice little spot, this on, uh, on Pratt and Knight Hill. Cool. Now, the reason we've got you two together today is first of all to talk about your individual uh, things that you do within the golfing world and also to talk about golf in general. I've been talking on my live streams uh, about golf every now and then. I've sort of dropped the issues every, every now and then. And people are saying, what's going on? What's going on with the courses? There was a time when there was the government here in Thailand was talking about being able to do alternative state quarantine in golf courses. What's happening with that? How much of the green fees these days? What about caddies? What are the, all the courses that many of the viewers might know? What's happening at them? So I'll ask you, Mike, what, what happens? What, what's your feeling about the whole of the golf world at the moment? And how about that specific issue about ASQs? Well, I, I think, first of all, uh, when the COVID started, we go back now to in Thailand in, in February, uh, we were all in lockdown and, of course, the golf courses were closed. Um, but then what happened, which was quite interesting, is that I think here in Thailand, and then it spread very quickly around the world, people realised that golf could be played. It's actually quite a good exercise. It's certainly social distancing. And from the research that I've noticed over the last nine months, you talk to people like uh, the boss of TaylorMade or Callaway, their sales have rocketed. They've had to take on new people. So, in fact, uh, probably of all the sports, golf has survived which is the word we use at the moment, we're all surviving. Uh, and here in Thailand, we've now got 260 golf courses, I think, Callum? Yes, I think that's about I mean, right. It's, it's right. a hell of a lot. And, and, and how many in the Chombury area, roughly, would you say? Uh, 28? Yeah. Appro approximately. I mean, we've now, for those who haven't been to, to Patia recently, we've now got the new motorway extension improvements on the 331. So, for example... If you went to play at Patanar in the old days, you'd, you'd take an hour. It's now, now now 40 minutes. So there's been a lot of improvements. When you do guys come back, you'll notice the, the benefits. Of course, a lot of people who haven't been to Patio for a year won't know that the, the number seven motorway has been extended down, and now you've got an exit at Ban Chang. Callum and I like to play the golf courses down there, like Eastern Star, we used to yeah. play a lot. And again, it was it was a good trek, particularly if you had to go through Satterhit. Now, this extension seven means I can get from Pratt and Mac to uh, Emerald yeah. Golf Course in probably about thirty five minutes. Right. So yeah. it's altered the whole package, you know. 
And Callum, with your contacts in the golfing world still, what what, what is the vibe that you're picking up about the the courses and and etc.? Well, the the courses that they're clearly not as busy or making as much revenue as they were before the uh, the ban on international travel. But some of that slack has been taken up with uh, the local ties playing a bit more golf. You've got the expats, particularly around Pattaya and Bangkok, who are playing golf. And, and there's a lot of golf events. So it's difficult to put a number on it. I would say overall, the numbers are down. But it's not a disaster area like the number of hotel residents. And the other thing that we're finding is that the pricing of golf during what is currently the high season is actually more attractive. It's more like low season prices. Uh, one of the points I always make about Patia is that you've got every type of golf course and you've also got a variety of price ranges. So you've got everything from the, the top championship courses like Siam Old Course down to value for money, even little nine-hole courses like Hotel Asia. So there's something to suit every budget. But we've certainly seen that the average cost of a day out at this time of year is probably about 40% lower than it was at this time of year in uh, 2019. Yeah. I don't know whether Mike would I mean, that, that. that said, on uh, Golf in Thailand, we encourage golfers to post their reviews. And the biggest grumble at the moment is still price. Yeah. They still think that the golf courses are taking the mickey out of us. Um, and I keep saying to the golf courses, you, there are some areas you can't or don't want to cut down for image or future business or whatever it is, which is the green fee or the caddy fee. The caddies still need to live. Yeah. But the one thing that I keep saying to them is, you've got golf carts parked in the in the garage. They're not earning you money, but uh, why not give them away free on certain days to encourage more people to play? Tell us a little bit more, because you mentioned it just then, about golf in Thailand and, and the forum and everything that you're doing off, off of the Thai Visa um, forum. Well, Thai Visa, as many of your viewers will know, is, is great for information. And because of the COVID, They've been their figures have gone zooming up, and they approached me and said, "Well, we haven't got a golf section. Could you create one?" So back in August, we created seven forums, so you can go on and you can see the 140 golf courses that we put in our directory, and the viewers come in and put comments on, which is useful. We have golf news, so we're linked with the LPGA and the PGA and all that. Um, we also have golf offers, which is important because that's where people can find out about the discounts. We do golf lessons, a forum where you can find out who's teaching. And shortly, we're about to launch golf in Southeast Asia because a lot of people, as Callum will agree, come to Pattaya or Bangkok or Wahin or Phuket to play golf and then shoot off now to yeah. Vietnam, which is probably our, our, our biggest competitor. Yes, I'd say Vietnam is. Yeah. yeah. So that's the basis of the Golf in Forum. Callum, many people will remember with great fondness uh, the Ryder Cup. Now, not the one between America and Europe um, over there in the Northern Hemisphere, but here in Thailand, your very own competition, which I'm very proud to say at the pub, we used to sponsor. Well, we're still the sponsor. We just haven't had a competition this year. What's What's... Tell us a little bit about the history and also what's going on for next year and when are we going to see the return of the Patio Ryder Cup? Well, the Ryder Cup, uh, we originally started in 2002 and it was an idea that came up, as ideas do, in, in a bar in Patio. And we thought, why don't we have a little little bit of a different competition? We had a few Americans in the bar, we had a few... Europeans, Brits and Norwegians. Am I, am I right in thinking this was at Cads? This actually started in somewhere you would remember, the FLB bar. Oh, we talk about it a lot on the channel, yeah. So we, we started off in the FLB bar. Yeah. They were the first sponsor. And we had, I think we only had something like 8 or 12 players in the first year. It grew and grew from there. At its peak, we used to get about 24 players aside. And it was always run first week in November 
and people planned their holidays around it. Now, last year, well, this year, should I say, 2020, is the first time since 2002 that we've had to postpone the event, uh, because, obviously because of the COVID and because people can't travel here. Uh, so our plan was to try and get it running again in the first quarter of 2021. It now looks as if we'll be looking at the third quarter of 2021. But we build in alongside that a number of other golf competitions. So it becomes a bit like a, a two to three week golf festival with a road trip with some other competitions and a great bunch of people that have been coming here every year for it. Uh, so many friends have been made over the years there. Very much so. And um, if people are interested, possibly looking forward to next year about maybe playing in the Ryder Cup, uh, and and let's let's be absolutely clear, it's a bit of fun. It's not. It is. It's not yeah. competitive. We're, we're, well, it is competitive on the course, but then we all come off and we have a drink and we have a meal together, and it's all good fun. So if people are interested in possibly entering that. Is it? Is that? Would, would that be through the Le Club uh, Facebook group? That would be through Le Club Facebook group. Very so, easy to find. So Just what do, we did there? do a search for Le Club Golf, and you'll see all the information about the Ryder Cup and any other events that we're running. And we've been very proud to uh, Le, Le Pub as a sponsor and a supporter for a number of years, even to the point of uh, shipping a few of their. Uh, elegant ladies out to the golf course uh, where I took the photographs. Yeah, and actually we've got some, uh, we'll be showing some photographs as we talk um, uh, on the video of some of the uh, the past Ryder Cups and, uh, and if people are interested in that, uh, it's a fun event uh, and uh, it's all around the bar as well, so it supports you guys, it supports the golfers, it supports the bar so uh, please, uh, if you're interested in that, look club in on the Facebook and you uh, ask to become a member we'll, uh, we'll uh, put you in a membership and uh, and will be more details on there as and when it becomes available next year absolutely Bill. What's, your, what's your feeling in your heart about when things will be able to get back to normal as far as not being able to quarantine, not having to quarantine etc what are you thinking Gary? well I'm thinking we're not going to see any return of people in volumes until the second half of 2021. Uh, you know, it'd be nice to think it would be earlier, but I think the second half of 2021, you asked earlier on about the situation that was under consideration, which is to use some of the golf courses that have accommodation as quarantine centers. Uh, regrettably, that does not look as if it's going to happen. No. I think there was about four courses that eventually applied for it. Is that yeah, but the, the, the restrictions that the government put on them, it was ridiculous because all golf courses have members. Yeah. Even if there's 10 members or some courses have right. 100, it meant that they couldn't come. Okay. So what's, it, it was a non-starter, oh. really. You, you can't close a golf I think it was a, an idea from government. Yeah, it was kind of a over good idea, but when they looked at the details... They had a coffee they and they said, let's yeah. come up with some ideas. It's okay. one of those. But I'd just like to say, uh, when, I, when I go around selling my shirts, I've done about 50 days at golf courses. Got a plug in there, didn't you? Got your plug yeah. in, yeah. 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 It's good. Got selling my club. shirts. Good. No, but, but realistically, I, I have done 50 days at golf courses, so I think I'm reasonably well up on the figures and you'll be surprised how many people are still filling the golf courses maybe on a monday tuesday wednesday it's not so busy but weekends uh treasure hill two weeks ago 400 people uh -huh. i've just come back from burapar yesterday and right through christmas including christmas day there were over 170 players a day and what's the split of ties versus uh, non-ties well i think roughly? it depends on the golf course uh when i was at um treasure hill they had a load of chinese sponsored by a chinese bank and they were turning up in mercedes and bmws it wasn't you know cheap charlie and then you go to burapar where you've got um the outback bar and Billabong, and they're all coming together on the same day to play, and you know it's it's more perhaps expats. It depends on the golf course. Absolutely. Now, Callum, as well as being the owner of Solar Golf, uh, you also um, had a bit of an um, 
an interest in a couple of bars over the years, I do remember. And we like to talk about bars on this channel. Well, we certainly do, and yes. I, I was saying to you, I'll maybe tell a few stories, but there's one particular story that you tell, you tell it really well, and it's true, and we've got a photograph to prove it. Talk about the elephant. Oh, the elephant, yes. This one. And we're not referring to one of my girls in the bar, <laughs> so just get that clear. No, this goes back to the way early days of our golfing groups, and we... Uh, a friend of mine, Robert, used to have a go-go called Kittens a go-go that was up in the Nagua. Nagua, yeah, and we, we, we took a bunch of lads up there, about 20 in a bat bus, and I spoke to Robert. I said, look, Robert, you're a bit short of girls, you know, the, the lads. And he said, well, I said, I'll tell you what, Callum, why don't you go out round the beer bars and see if you can bar find a few interesting ones to bring in, you know, entertain the lads. So my friend Steve and I went out, and the first thing we bumped into was a baby elephant with a mahout. And it's Steve said, he said, you know what, Callum, why don't we bring the elephant into the bar? I said, Steve, I think that's a great idea. So we said to the mahout, you know, how much for you to come in the bar? I said, oh, um, well, I don't know. I said, well, I'll tell you what, we'll give you 200 baht, and you can bring the elephant in. So we gave him the 200 baht. And he brought the elephant into the go-go bar. And the elephant is working its way around the buffet, having a go at the Scotch eggs, you know. It wasn't at all interesting. I thought you were going to say he was on the whiskey. You know, we ended up with one of the girls on the elephant's back. <laughs> and uh, I, I wasn't allowed to go back in there for a little while afterwards. And there's photographic evidence, isn't there? There is photographic evidence. You may put it in the video a bit later on. I think you may have that one on file. Yes, I think I have, actually, yeah. Great, great stories. And, uh, and, and you, owned a, you owned a bar on Soul 16 as well. Can't you? I was a, a shareholder in a, a bar called Cats A Go Go, which followed on from Kittens. Kittens, yeah. And we used to do the, the Cats Open, which was one, one year by, by my very good friend Greg from Japan, who we all know as Dung Heat. Yeah. And the reason he's known as Dung Heat is because he seems to attract a lot of flies on the <laughs> golf course. But he won the Cats Open. And so he had this sort of 700 bat trophy, went back to Japan, went to check in with Japan Airlines, and they went, oh, you win golf competition. He went, yeah, yeah, I've been, I've been playing in a, in a very big competition in Pattaya. Okay, we'll, we'll upgrade you to business class. Wow. So they so upgraded him to business class with a Cats Open trophy that had its own seat in business class. And he went all the way back to, to Tokyo with him, thinking he's some very famous professional golfer. <laughs> Happy days. Nice one. Callum, it's lovely to hear you um, in, in such good health as well. You seem, uh, you seem to uh, be enjoying life at the moment. I'm still clawing along there, Philip. Excellent. So let's um, just finish up with just a few words about... Um, what you think is coming up in 2021, Mike, for the golfing world? Well, I, I think uh, as we speak at the end of the year, some of you may know that Thailand's now started to get a few co coronavirus cases. And here in Chambri, they've said there's been about 20 in the last 24 hours. Yeah. So I think the golf courses themselves, those that were thinking about putting up prices, and now definitely not going to put up prices. I'll give you a few examples. Down in Phuket, uh, they were offering a round of golf at Laguna Phuket, which is a, a good course. Yeah. Two nights in a, a suite in a four-star hotel, two meals for 990 baht. Wow. Now, it gets to the point where mm. it gets to the point where the golf courses can't make ends meet. They still have to cut the grass. They've still got to maintain the high quality. And to be fair, the caddies need to earn something. Otherwise, we're just going to see no more caddies. And I think the female caddies are very important to the, the tourism yeah, industry. Absolutely. Oh, without doubt. And, 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 and Callum, that's something that has always stuck in my mind about you, that you've always said to people, let's get the caddies working. Let, you know, Make sure you tip your caddies. Make sure that they're, uh, they're well looked after. I've, that's always been something I've considered very important. That, that you know, people give the caddies a fair tip. Uh, in, in truth, the the golf tourist who's here on a holiday 
can generally afford to tip the caddies more yes. than the expat who's playing three or four times mm. a week. So the caddies were always, always very happy to see solar golf. And I used to get um, a lot of requests in advance for caddy bookings. I remember, yeah. Yeah. And yeah. they'd send me a description. She had black hair, brown eyes, and was about <laughs> five foot tall. Can you book her for me again? Oh, and her name was Noi. I said, yeah, yeah, no problem. <laughs> yeah, but the things have changed now because a lot of golf courses are now not allowing people to book caddies because it's not fair on certain caddies. I mean, all golf courses have the, the glamorous, beautiful golf, uh, caddy, don't yeah. they? And they get booked up day in, day out. And then, not being rude, but you've got the, perhaps the more pompoui caddy at the back of the line who, who doesn't get any work. It was probably actually a better caddy. Well, sometimes I think you can say that if you have a very beautiful caddy, you don't concentrate so much <laughs> on, on the game. But at the end of the day, the caddies are definitely, as Tom Jai, Jai Di used to say, is the Thailand secret weapon. Yeah. And a lot of them have left the industry because they just cannot afford to rely on two rounds a week. It's just not going to make financial sense. Yeah. Uh, particularly the expats who live here, they don't see why they should be forced to take yeah. a caddy. And it's coming out of their retirement funds yes. which are being reduced so it's quite a serious problem yeah. but I think that the golf courses without the female caddy would be a disaster yeah Callum I might be putting you on the spot here mm -hmm. which I enjoy doing but I know you do yes have you, got a, you could be naughty because we can always cut it out have you got a naughty story about a caddy maybe I've got a few naughty stories about caddies have a think about that <coughs> while, while I, I tell this story about yeah. you Callum because you just reminded me of something that happened. You mentioned somebody's name. Callum, one one day, says to me, Phil, do you want to come up and see the LPGA tournament at um, Sun Country Club? I said, yeah, that would be really nice. So we got some VIP tickets. And we were, uh, went up in Callum's car. He was very kind to pick me up. And, and when we were there, I've got to be honest, Callum was a little, little bit annoyed because the year before, he'd had a free bar in the VIP area with free throw Chang beer. But unfortunately, that was taken away from us this particular year. And he was, well, he was, never mind. Well, well we'd, we'd, I think it rained that day, didn't it? And, and we had, yes, um, it did. We absolutely tipped that. So he was in the VIP area. And as you, as we are, we've been top sportsmen down in the Chang beers. And uh, Callum's had one or two, shall we say. And I see somebody sitting over, over the far end. And I say, oh, look, Callum. Look who it is, look who it is, and Callum's going, oh, mm, mm. Couldn't, couldn't, quite, couldn't quite pick out who it was, and he goes, oh, yeah, yeah, Callum says, it's the, um, it's the, it's the former mayor of Patia, and I went, no, <laughs> no, Callum, it's Tom Tai Jai D, the biggest golf star in Thailand, I remember and he was sitting that. about two metres away from us, and Callum couldn't quite pick him out. <laughs> as, as to be fair to Callum, the, the, the mayor did actually play often in the Pro-Am. Oh, OK. But just to update people, the LPGA have just announced that the Thailand, Honda Thailand, what's it called? Uh, LPGA Honda Thailand, which yeah. is normally held in February, is going to be in May. So hopefully, fingers crossed, if all the COVID's over and people are going to come back and enjoy a bit of Patia and, social. And this, people, it's the biggest event in Patia. And for those people that haven't been to the LPGA event, it is really well supported, and the level of golf mm. is, is quite amazing. Oh, right? you've got the top top yeah. seventy lady golfers in the world, and and, and girls from uh, coming from America as well. I know. Um, uh, the pink well, Michelle, we there, used yeah. to be there, and yeah. all the top. But it's the Lexi. one of the yeah. one of the few sporting events that can actually guarantee if you like the venue and the sponsor the top 50 very you don't get the top 50 in in men's golf very often no i remember one time the lpga i did i used to do a, a thailand golf today a tv show on sofon it didn't last very long but i interviewed laura davis on the day <laughs> on, the, on the first day of the lpga so there's me with my microphone, I do remember and, and I got Laura. I said, um, "I said, Laura, I said, um, 
it's really nice that you've come over. And how's your form been going into this tournament? And she looked me straight in the eye. She said, well, if you'd done your research, you would realise that I won the Australian Open last week. <laughs> I said, yeah. ah, yeah, well done, Laura. Yes. And she proceeded, uh, ended up down the elephant bar at the bottom of Soy 4, drinking all the... Uh, all the caddies under the table on cider <laughs> because she was in stone cold last place Lord after is, day one. Laura is quite a personality. But, but I think oh, the great. LPGA players who, who I've met a lot through my journalism, they actually love coming to Patia because uh, number one is to get a, a proper massage is at the top of their shopping list. They all stay at the Doucet yeah. and around there there's a lot of good massage places and now of course they've got Terminal 21 there. Yeah. Shopping and, and LPGA go hand in hand, doesn't it? They do. Yeah, I'm not sure that the uh, I'm not sure that the golfers do a lot of shopping. Well, they're, they're, they're too busy playing golf. No, no, you'd be surprised that after they finished a morning session, I've often seen people wandering around. Get away! Yeah, you were asking about funny caddy stories. Um, this will get cut. But, uh, no, that's not. On, it I'm won't get to this. cut. But it was all. <laughs> One of the early Ryder Cups we had at Phoenix, and we were making a video about it. And uh, the interviewer said to me, "Mr. Callum, what tips have you got on uh, selecting caddies from the the group?" I said, "Well, generally, go for a caddy that's wearing lipstick." <laughs> and uh, he went, "Now that's a very simple one." And then my caddy could be appeared in the picture. It was quite a good-looking little caddy. I said. And yours is wearing lipstick. I said, yeah, yeah, she tends to do that. So we, her trick was, as I got the tea and I hit the ball, I go, where did that go be? And she'd be looking in the mirror, putting her lipstick on. <laughs> I said, I don't know, Mackie. Said, By the way, can I have a new mobile telephone? <laughs> but the, I think, uh, just to finish on caddies, I always remember when the tourists come, and I did it myself, my first round of golf in Thailand. We got to hole 17, and I said to my partner, well, what are we going to tip the caddies? I, I don't know, how much? And so you go up to the caddy and say, well, what do you expect? And they say, it's up to you. Just, <laughs> so if anyone's listening, I mean, I think we'd all agree that the minimum is normally about 300 baht. Absolute minimum, 300. It's not yeah. fair on them. If, if a girl's gone around and had to put up with you for 18 holes... That she deserves something more than this, you know, nothing. I mean, it's amazing how I've heard from caddies where they've done 36 rounds with Koreans and not got a tip. And and normally they're very polite and they, the, the golf club's managers tell them not to complain. But it's yeah. very unfortunate when you spend 36 hours in the heat in Thailand sure. going around. Sure. And it happens. So you have to remember when you do play golf with the, these girls that, they have a family to look after. They've probably been waiting there since five in the morning. Uh, you tee off at nine o'clock and you end up giving them nothing. It, it's, it's depressing. And they've all been freelancing in Ibar the night before. I, I, I would not like to comment. But at the <laughs> e end of the day, on a serious note, a lot of people think that the caddy fee is enough. And it's down to people like Callum, who is a professional tour operator, to tell the tourists what the score is and to be fair to the golf clubs. And at the end of the day, a lot of people say, I'm not worthy of a, gol a caddy, yeah. particularly the, the, the female golfer tourist. And after the round, you see them going off with a caddy shopping together. <laughs> you know, oh, it's, it's, a, it's a really good vibe. It is. I mean, I generally, um, my recommendation now, is minimum 400, yeah. but generally about 500, yeah. and put them on a bonus for birdies. You know, and the other thing that we always did is we did a nearest the pin on the par yeah, three. Yeah, we used to have competitions, didn't so we? So there's a little yeah. sweepstake for the caddies, yeah. and there was 20 bat each on nearest the pin. Whoever got nearest the pin, their caddy got the, uh, the, got pot. the, got the 20 bat pot per player. Yeah. It may not be a lot, but winning 80 bat off a four ball is enough for her to buy her dinner that night. Well, when we did it on two par threes on a round, it, it adds up, and we enjoy it as, as golfers as well. So, it, anyway, all we're trying to say is don't grumble too much about the caddies because I think I wouldn't want to play a, a round of golf without a, a female caddy. Absolutely. Mike, 
Callum, it's been lovely chatting with you. Great to hear some stories. Very uh, positive news about golf looking uh, going forward to 2021. Callum, you, you've got so many friends abroad that, that are watching the channel and coming to the bar. Have you got a, a New Year's message for all your friends abroad in Scotland and all over the world? Yes, I have, Phil, and that is that uh, I really can't wait for the day when we see all of you back out here again, yeah. having a great time, not just on the golf course, but socially, um, in the pub, in the various bars that we drink in. Uh, we miss you loads, all of you, and we can't wait for you to make it back here. I just hope that 2021 is going to give us that opportunity in spades. Fingers crossed. That's a lovely way to end the, the video today. I hope you've enjoyed the video. If you have, please give us a like, subscribe to the channel. We'll have more stories from around the bars in Katia and hopefully some more golfing stuff as well. But for now, for my two guests today, from Mike Bridge and to Callum Mackey, Thank you very much and see you soon. Thank you very much, Phil. Top Kunka. Bye bye, everyone. Mm -hmm.